What if Goku and Vegeta was sent to Earth? Let's get this video to 200 likes and I will continue the series. Also, share this video and comment down below and then let's reach 10,000 subscribers. So I hope you guys enjoy. Now, Planet Vegeta, the events happen the exact same, with Frieza destroying the planet as that was his goal anyway. But in this what if, when in different sides of the planet, King Vegeta and Bardock would both send their children away. As in this what if, they're both going to be infants. So in this what if, they actually send, without knowing, Goku and Vegeta both to planet Earth together. So both space pods would escape as planet Vegeta was destroyed. Now Frieza would be laughing, saying what beautiful fireworks. I do believe that Raditz and Nappa would still be survived as they would still be on other planets doing their normal thing. That would happen the same, but sadly, all the other Saiyans have sadly passed away as Goku and Vegeta are one of the few remaining Saiyans ever in Universe 7. Well, other than Broly. But now, back on Earth, the space pods would crash as an old man was walking across the trails. It was Grandpa Gohan. He would actually see the two space pods as they would actually land right next to each other and two little children, or babies, were actually out of the space pod crawling around. It was Goku and Vegeta. So Grandpa Gohan would be really confused. He would hold both of them up and say they both had tails. He would be really weirded out, but he would soon accept them as his sons. And he would teach them all he knows, even martial arts training as well. But now, during this, Goku as an infant still does hit his head. Uh, but with Vegeta, when Vegeta falls out as well, Vegeta was actually able to catch himself and he was alright. Now the reason for this is because Vegeta is far more powerful than Goku is. When Goku was an infant, he had a power level of like 1 probably like a two. Now Vegeta as an infant in the Super Broly movie did show that he had a power level of around 600 as a baby in a little tank. So I'm gonna just assume that his power level was 600 in this. So yeah, Vegeta is really powerful baby. Like he's pretty much the most powerful person in the Dragon Ball saga pretty much, which is pretty insane if you actually think about it. So Goku would still hit his head and still be kind of goofy and everything else like that. Vegeta would still be pretty aggressive as a baby, but he would soon, you know, adapt and do it as Grandpa Gohan was a kind soul. But then, sadly, Grandpa Gohan would still pass away as Goku and Vegeta would still become the great apes and accidentally kill him. But as they're kind of like brothers, as they think they're like blood brothers, they would pretty much stick together no matter what. Now, Vegeta at this time... He does know about his Saiyan heritage, as he did go back to the space pod as he feels kind of a connection to it. Unlike Goku, who has horrible memory loss, Vegeta would actually watch and study what the space pods have and show Goku. Now, Goku bumping his head, he doesn't really think much of it, but for Vegeta, it's different, as he knows that he is the prince of all Saiyans, but he doesn't really think that's true, as he kind of, you know, he doesn't really know his plan is gone, so he doesn't have that sense of pride that he's always used to. This Vegeta is actually a little bit different. He's still the cocky, rude guy, but he's not as, I would say negative and as brutish as the one that we all know and love where he's always such an ass but now goku and vegeta would still meet bulma and bulma yes would still be searching for the four star dragon ball and obviously bulma tries to you know show herself off for them and everything else like that obviously they're both not interested at all uh, vegeta does have a special connection to bulma they actually those two would be arguing the most and hitting you know threats back and forth to each other and rude comments very similar to how when they first met you know you know vegeta calling her bull moo or something that would pretty much happen the exact same with them comically going back and forth now goku was really clueless but i think they would actually give her the dragon ball as long as they can come along which bulma would agree but it was chaos and her bulma could barely handle goku imagine two little sands running around it was really really tiring and it would drive her mentally insane but I do feel like with them being a lot more stronger together, I do feel like, you know, they would really mix well. Now, remember, both Goku and Vegeta, I would say, is around 12 years old. So power levels for them at this point, they're both training together. And Vegeta has amazing potential, plus Goku has amazing potential as well. Vegeta had a power level of 600 as an infant when he was a baby, firstborn. I do feel like with training, how Vegeta trains all the time, and Goku, obviously 
they, get, they got no else better to do and they're sparring partners, I feel like Vegeta would have a power level of 2,000. And Goku would have a power level of 850. Now that does seem high for Goku, but it would make sense considering how powerful Vegeta is and they've been fighting every day, all day. I mean, there's nothing else to do other than eat food and sleep. They just train, that's what Saiyans do. Now, Vegeta is not as powerful as he would be when he was 12. As a lot of people remember that in the original, I think Vegeta had a power level of nearly 12,000 when he was like 12 years old, back in the original Dragon Ball Z. Uh, but that's because he was on 10 times gravity on the, on the planet, and he was also fighting Cybermen, things like that. So I'm just giving him 2,000 for what it purposes. Now, most of the events would pretty much happen the exact same, just a lot more easier when they're dealing with threats and foes, because, I mean, just Goku himself, he can solo Dragon Ball right now. I mean, he can solo Dragon Ball. N not much of an issue. Vegeta can easily solo Dragon Ball. But now, they pretty much, Goku and Vegeta has a brother relationship, and they would still meet Master Roshi himself. And they would still train together, they would still meet Krillin. They would still meet Tien and Yamcha. Bulma, I do feel, would still fall for Yamcha. Now, Vegeta and Bulma would have that chemistry there. And, and you can just see that like they're meant to be together. But I do feel like Bulma would fall for Yamcha first. Just because Yamcha's a little bit older looking. And, you know, he's you know the bandit, the bad boy. Which, I mean, Vegeta easily defeated him. But we're just saying for what it purposes that Bulma's still with Yamcha for now. Obviously, Master Roshi sees how powerful these two are. He doesn't really think he can train them that much, let alone fight them. But he does think that his, you know, Kami style workout could really help him out with their strength and everything, and also teach him the Turtle School martial art. So he does just that. Just way bigger weights and way more difficult training than the original. And Goku and Vegeta accept it heartily. They are really excited to be training, and they are really exceeding his expectations. Now, during the Budokai, when Goku fought Tien, most of the fighting would pretty much go the same way, just they're so much stronger, way more powerful than anybody else are there. The, I mean, Master Roshi would even fight them, and I do feel like Master Roshi would actually do kind of good, and only reason why is because he has way more experience, and he does have some techniques that actually are pretty in impressive, but I don't think he would last very well, and, and Goku would win. Now, against Tien, Goku would win, or Vegeta would win. They're pretty much so powerful now that it doesn't even matter. Now, I do feel like when they have their first match together, I do feel like Vegeta would win. Vegeta is a little bit too far ahead of Goku. If I'm just going to throw power levels out there now, after Master Roshi training, Vegeta has to be near 2,500 to 3,000. Goku has to be near 1,500 at maximum, like 1,500, Vegeta is just too powerful. And Vegeta is more, you know, ferocious, and he fights more like a Saiyan. So he's way more bloodthirsty than Goku is. But, but uh, that's not saying that uh, Vegeta would lose. Vegeta would have a really, really hard time beating Goku. It would be a really, really good match. But I feel like Vegeta would then end up winning because he's just too powerful right now. But... That would just make their rivalry more better. And they're actually really happy. But this gives Goku more drive to train even harder to fight Vegeta again. After their fight, they would still waste all the money on food. Everything, that, that funny scene still happens the exact same between each other. But now, obviously, yes, Goku would still be training with the others and everything else. And, you know, would, would the King Piccolo arc happen? We're about to jump into that. Now, King Piccolo... Would Goku be able to beat King Piccolo? Yes. I mean, Krillin doesn't even die in this scene. King Piccolo has zero chance against either Goku nor Vegeta. Now, would Goku drink the Ultra Divine Water? I think that he would. I still think that he would, just in case, since he's already there with Korin. And Vegeta, I don't think Vegeta could drink the water. Just because Goku is super, super, super innocent. That's the only reason why he survived. And Goku theoretically died for a little bit and he came back. He almost died. Vegeta's a bit more negative and not as innocent and pure. I think he would probably die if he tried drinking that water. But Vegeta doesn't care about it as he thinks that, eh, that's just, you know, he doesn't need that. Now, it does make Goku a little bit more powerful, which does help him. 
and they would easily kill King Piccolo. But before they do, King Piccolo would still spit out Piccolo Jr., and that would start the Piccolo Jr. arc. Now, during the Piccolo Jr. arc, most of the events would happen the same, just easier for everybody, especially when Goku fights Tian Shanhan, and Vegeta would, say, fight Krillin. All that would happen the same. Now, Piccolo doesn't really care about Vegeta. He has a bone to pick with Goku. So this Goku was the one who kind of killed his father. He did do the final blow to him. Piccolo doesn't like Vegeta because Vegeta helped him. But he does really doesn't like Goku because Goku killed him. Now, Goku would still meet Chi-Chi. And they would actually still get married. So all that would happen the same. Now, at this point... At this point, Yamcha is still dating Bulma. I know. But that really does change... It really starts noticing, especially when Bulma sees how much Goku and Vegeta has grown. I mean, Vegeta's a man now, being 18, 19, same with Goku. I mean, everybody was shocked seeing how much they've grown together, and they're pretty much young men. So it would shock them seeing how much way more grown that they've been. And Bulma does find Vegeta really attractive, since, you know, Vegeta's a grown man, he's serious, he's thorough, he's no joke. And, you know, actually, Vegeta would smile, and he's actually really happy to see all of his friends. Because he does consider them all friends. But now, I think we know what we're all here for. The final battle between Goku and Vegeta. The rematch. Now, during this battle, I would say that they're pretty much almost even. I still feel like Vegeta does have the slight upper hand. Goku, I would say, have a power level of around 5,000. The Ultra Divine Water, plus also training with Korn and Kami for the past four years, has really helped. Vegeta actually trained on his own. He actually trained around with the Bulma's father and everything. Though didn't really see Bulma all that much, but Bulma's father did help him with giving him some technology to help him. So Vegeta kind of did some solo training for a while, as Vegeta's more of a solo guy too. We're not we're not going to forget that about Vegeta, but but he's more comfortable around family and friends. But Vegeta has a power level of around six thousand. It's around a thousand power level difference, which does add up to a lot, but. It would be a brutal, brutal, bloody fight between the two Saiyans. It would be worse than Piccolo Jr. versus Goku. They're pretty much almost dead even. And at the end of the fight, the two would crash into each other and both would fall being knocked out. As it was a tie. Neither Goku nor Vegeta won. But now they would be given Sensu Beans and yes... Piccolo Jr., by the way, would be defeated. Not much of a problem. Power level-wise, Piccolo Jr. would probably be in the 500s or the 600s, just to be nice. But that would mean that Vegeta is like 10 times more powerful than him. If they fought, Vegeta would have easily defeated him, or Goku would have easily defeated Piccolo Jr. And so we can just cross that over. But that also gives Piccolo Jr. more of a time to train even harder than ever to try and keep up with these guys. As he does want to take over the world. But now... Bulma and Vegeta, during these years together, Goku and Vegeta would still be training together, and Goku would then marry Chi-Chi the day after. And now during this point of a few years, of five years, Bulma and Vegeta would actually get together, and they would actually get married. And they would actually have a son as well. Now Goku and Bulma, joking, Goku and Chi-Chi had Gohan. Did, did you like what I did there with uh, Goku and Bulma? That's for a what if later. Shh. But now Goku and Chi-Chi would still have Gohan. And Vegeta and Bulma would still have Trunks. And they would name the child. And both of these children, I do feel like they would meet up with each other. As Goku and Vegeta still train a lot together. And that would be a really cool brotherly bond. As we all love, you know, Gohan and Trunks having that friendship. Uh, so it would be really similar to like Goten and Trunks. But... Uh, Sadly, Chi-Chi's still on that tirade to where she does not want Gohan training. and But Bulma doesn't care. Bulma thinks that, yes, Trunks does need to be taught, but she understands where he came from and the fact that they're training. So, But Chi-Chi's a little bit different. She wants Gohan to be a great scholar and everything else. So that did not change, sadly. But Gohan would actually be a little bit more powerful as a child because he has his father, he has Vegeta, and he even has Trunks as well. So he has all these different guys to train with him and everything. Gohan would like training. But now, as the five years would pass, Goku arrives to meet the gang once again. Now, he was alongside Vegeta as well and Bulma and everybody else. They would all be really happy to see each other. They would introduce their two children to everybody, surprising them. And then Raditz would still show up. 
Raditz would still meet actually Piccolo first, and Piccolo would have a power level around a thousand. Uh, I would say around a thousand two hundred, but Raditz is a power level thousand five hundred. Uh, I do feel like he would scare Piccolo a little bit, and Piccolo would kind of back off. But he would still follow to see what happens. But now Raditz would still arrive on the Kami house. And he would still tell Goku about the Saiyan past, which they already know about. And the fact that why isn't the planet not destroyed? Raditz would be really surprised to see Prince Vegeta. As Raditz would actually acknowledge him and say, you are the prince of all the Saiyans. What are you doing on Earth and not doing your job? Vegeta doesn't care about this prince crap. He really doesn't care about it. As it sounds like a cool title, but he doesn't want it. Now, Raditz would try and take it by force by trying to take one of their sons. That would not go too well. As Raditz would even try to reach for them, Vegeta would appear and break Raditz's arm like it was a twig and kick him into the ocean. Remember, these guys are way more powerful. These guys are way more powerful. You know, like, even... I would put them together of having around ten to 12,000 power level each. I would say that Goku and Vegeta, they're around 12,000. They're pretty much even in power at this point. Raditz has zero opportunity. But luckily, Raditz did not come alone. Raditz had Nappa. Nappa shows up, and Nappa's actually pretty strong. They will admit that. Nappa has a power level of around 7,000, 7,500. And it's still, still not going to be enough, especially against two of them. But I do feel like Vegeta would handle Nappa and Goku would handle Raditz and both of them would sooner or later get destroyed not much of a chance now Vegeta deep down did not want to kill them because he knows that it's they're pretty much other than him Goku and their two sons they're the last Saiyans left there's no other Saiyans but he hurt his family and they're gonna destroy and they're gonna destroy Earth which Vegeta loves the planet he's not gonna let that go but now, Vegeta would explain to Goku the detail about, really about, like, why the Saiyans did what they did, like, the slave trade, and how they, like, sold planets, and they really sold workers, and made them work like slaves, pretty much, and how they also traded planets for currency and technology, which is what the Saiyans truly did, and it's sad. But, Vegeta says that, luckily, we're not like that, so it's fine. But Vegeta does have flashbacks of Frieza. And the reason why is because on Nappa's scouter, he hears his voice. And Frieza nearly collapses Vegeta. Just the voice of Frieza makes Vegeta fall to his knees in fear, shaking. As Vegeta remembers Frieza very well, he knows how powerful Frieza is. As Vegeta also studied in the Saiyan Space Pod about Frieza and what Frieza is, he would tell Goku about it, and Goku has heard about Frieza before, and he knows how powerful he is. That honestly makes Goku pretty pumped up. As Goku kind of wants to see how strong this guy is and go fight him, Vegeta would grab him and tell him, Kakarot, you stupid bastard! You know, like, Frieza is not somebody to fight. That is a death sentence. And the fact that he actually heard their conversation about the Dragon Balls and about the fact that Vegeta is alive, that would spark Frieza's interest. That means that Frieza's most likely going to either be heading to Earth. But luckily, Vegeta was relieved to hear that Frieza is not heading to Earth. Frieza wants to head to planet Namek, which is really far away across the galaxies, but to find the Dragon Balls, as Frieza can wish for immortality. Now, Goku says, well, we can't let him do that. He's going to destroy those innocent people and hurt people, as Vegeta would agree, but how are they going to get there? Then they remember the same space pods, as Bulma, during this time, has collected them and actually built a space pod. Just joking. She's built a giant space machine and also even added gravity training. As Vegeta does know that the planet does have 10 times gravity on planet Vegeta. So he says, why don't we try and stick to our Saiyan roots and add that so we can get naturally adapted. Which, I feel like Bulma would agree to that. So, that gravity room, Bulma will keep on adding more and more and more. As Vegeta actually already trained in a temporary or an experimental gravity room of around 10 times. It was really rough, but Vegeta was able to do it, and I think that Goku would try it out as well. They say, well, we need to get way more higher gravity and go to the planet. 
we can get sensu beans and everything, but Bulma says that we need to wait for about a year. Bulma will go with them, alongside Gohan really wants to go with them, and Krillin, so they have a whole team ready to go. Now, during the meantime of that year, Goku and Vegeta train hard, like never before. They would train for a year non-stop together to get as strong as possible, and even train on the way to Namek. This means, by the way, since Goku never went to King Kai, no Kaioken, and there is no Spirit Bomb either. And that is it for this What If, you guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the longer What Ifs that I'm doing. Instead of like the 10 to 12 minutes, I am making them a little bit longer. Some of you guys have been asking me to do that, to make them like 20 minutes. It's not very easy to do it, but I am enjoying it because you guys asked for it and I give you what you guys want. Let me know what you think about this series. I have so many awesome ideas for it. And yes, I also noticed that you guys have been wondering what is with my thumbnails. Why has some of them had... Uh, the text on them and some of them are like full arts pretty much the reason why is just because I love doing full art thumbnails And I also love doing text thumbnails So as a matter of fact Comment down below if you made it this far. What type of thumbnails do you prefer? Do you prefer my thumbnails with the text on them? Or do you prefer the thumbnails that are pretty much like a full art thumbnail? Let me know down in the comments down below. I love you guys so much and I will talk to you all later